Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that we're shit. Fuck. Damn. Ow. That hurt. Here we go. Damn. Fucking win. Ow. Well, good Monday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course. Joe Boo is at the Red Brick House holding it down. But Joe Bear is in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. You know, um... It's strange. I feel like um, there's an old song. Papa was a rolling stone. Wherever he laid his hat was his home. And when he died, all he left us was alone. I feel like I'm a rolling stone because yesterday morning I did my morning you know, broadcast from Harrisburg and came back here doing this here. And then I get back on the road or red brick house. I literally feel like I'm a rolling stone. And some days I feel like I keep getting hit in the head like that tripod. Um, it's crazy how much I get from people, okay? I get the 49er fan, Jason, he's fired off a couple of emails and said, you're a liar, you're wrong about that. Hargave's the only big name free agent that we signed. I said, wait a minute, I said, listen, 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 listen. It's not just that free agent signing. You went out and said, you know, I don't think we have quite enough. And whether Chase Young and Randy Gregory, you know, end up making a big impact for your future or not, you still went out and got better players or tried to get people that were better on your team. You went out and you made a trade for Christian McCaffrey. The Cowboys, we don't do that stuff. I went through the list last night. In fact, hold it. Let me grab the damn thing. Shit. Y'all don't piss me. Y'all piss me off. Piss me off. You want, you want to hear crazy? I'm going to tell you how crazy it is. In comparison, Randy Gregory as a free agent signing is probably a bigger free agent signing than any we've done in the last 10 years. Just saying. I'm just saying. The Cowboys don't sign free agents that are uninjured, younger, Think about some of the people, you know, Anthony Barr, George Iloka, um, Clinton Ha Ha Dix, Don Terry Poe, Emerson Griffin, Gerald McCoys. I'll take Randy Gregory over any of those guys with his weed smoking self. I seriously would. I seriously would. It's literally, literally that bad. I went through the list. This is from the Laundry Hat Report, it was a, where they, they ranked the top 15 moves. And I'll, I'll say I actually have to add somebody else to it. I have to say that Nate Newton, who has three Super Bowl rings and was integral in the offensive line for the Dallas Cowboys, was definitely one of them. But the only one in the last 10 years that they put in the top 15 of free agent signings for the Cowboys is J. Ron Curse. And when you start thinking about some of the guys that are on this list, guys like Keith Brookings and Zach Thomas that were in the twilight of their careers that I don't think were even here for two years, it lets you know that the Cowboys just have done absolutely nothing in free agency. Now, we have 13 days till legal tampering starts. Legal tampering. And as I said about getting hit in the head, you know, so I've got, 49er fan that, that's going through there. I got my man, uh, Walker Wade. You know, he's sending me clips from 105 The Fan where guys are saying that, you know, the Cowboys can't take the hit for Dak Prescott and maybe it's time for Trey Lance and everything. I'm constantly getting beat over the head by people that act like what I say actually matters. People. 
I am not working for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not in Jerry Jones's ear. I'm not making decisions on who the Cowboys keep or who they get rid of or who they pursue. I'm not even on ESPN or Fox Sports or the NFL Network. I'm just a guy who enjoys talking about football and is Joe the fan that loves the Cowboys and wants them to do better. And I may have a difference of opinion than what you may have on ways to go about it. But I dare say the things that I have suggested are not things that we've tried. I have been forever saying that we've got to fix the interior defensive line. I've gone back to when Calais Campbell was a young man coming off of the Cardinals and said, that's the kind of guy you need on your defensive line. A guy that's a team leader, team leader, NFL man of the year, leads by example, causes double team, rakes havoc. People say, oh, he's too expensive. Okay. You know that year when I said that? He was runner-up as defensive MVP and led the Jacksonville Jaguars to the AFC Championship game. Sitting right here, when he was a free agent from the Jets, linebackers, this is 2018, the same year we drafted Leighton Vendorish, I had Demario Davis sitting right here, right there, and saying, that's the kind of linebacker that the Cowboys need. They need a guy who is a leader, who's a heart and soul, who plays downhill. And what I hear from people, man, he's a bum, man. He's too expensive. And that guy hasn't missed a game, not a single game. In those six years with the New Orleans Saints, plays downhill, is an ultimate team leader, has about four or five sacks a season and about 120 tackles. Game changer and a leader on the defense. It's just two moves right there. Right now, sitting here today, what are our problems on defense? What are our problems on defense? Stopping the run on the defensive line and linebacker. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Now, Calais Campbell, of course, is long in the tooth now. He's had a great career. I wish that those two guys had been here in Dallas. Maybe we wouldn't have these problems because, see, the Cowboys' solution is Anthony Barr in the middle of training camp coming off an ACL injury. San Francisco, hey, let's try Randy Gregory. Weed's legal out here. Let's start, try Chase Young. Let's get Hargrave. You can look at those three moves right there. Those three moves right there are more than the Dallas Cowboys have done in the last 10. So, Jason, don't give it. No, listen, trust me, bro, I've been here. I get it. We don't do shit. While Eagles go out and get an A.J. Brown to help their quarterback having the best offensive line in football, we get rid of our best wide receiver. We get rid of our third best one. And then we turn around the next year, we get rid of our, our interior running back to run in the middle and tell the guy who's been a part-time running back who can't stay healthy coming off of a broken leg, you get all the carries now. I don't know how you people don't see this and look at it and say, the guy who led the NFL in touchdown passes is the problem. In the same way that you get somebody like Micah Parsons, who's on an island by himself to stop the run, who at times takes double and triple teams. And when a guy takes double and triple teams, that means everybody else should be feasting. That means you got one-on-one -on -one at best. 
against them. There's going to be guys that should be wide open rushing the quarterback. Unless they end up having about 10 offensive linemen. If you got three people with Micah, that means there are not that many more guys to go around for the other three. You follow what I'm saying here? As great as Lawrence Taylor was, he had guys like Carl Banks out there. And Harry Carson's out there. You know? Um, what was the nose tackle that they had? Um, wasn't Jim Burt. What? Uh, but but you, you follow what I'm saying. We expect one person to do the job of everyone, and it doesn't work that way. But here it is, the Cowboys, it's time to go shopping. From A to Z, we're going shopping. The combine starts today. Yay, combine. Combine starts today, so the Cowboys can start looking at the prospects that they may want to draft. And we got holes. We got the Tyron Smith issue. Tyron Smith be back. Of course he will. We've got the running back issue because the two running backs that we had to let us are free agents. We got defensive line issues because we have guys like uh, Dante Fowler and um, uh, Dorrance Armstrong that are free agents uh, that, that can be gone. We got Stephon Gilmore that's a free agent that's out there, as well as others. So we have some guys that won't be here or you have to resign. But we always go through and say, let's resign our own guys because we believe in those. We believe in our guys. Well, here's the thing. We've gone through with our guys, our bottom basement guys, year after year after year, and it's not enough. Some of them are really good role players, but we can't win a Super Bowl with just role players. And I am just at the point of, I, I'm ready to throw in the towel about, you know, Dak Prescott. I almost wish that we could just go into the future without Dak Prescott and just take a look. Take a look, okay, and see how it could be. Because we always think that the grass is always greener, that this other girl out here is going to be better, this job over here will be nicer than the one I have, until you get there. And then you realize, I screwed the hell up. I'm sitting here knowing what I see. I see Denver that since Peyton Manning has been trying to get a quarterback and has done everything from drafting Drew Locke in the first round to making trades for Russell Wilson, a guy that went to two Super Bowls. And they're about to take a big-ass dead hit because it didn't work out. And they're back to square one at trying to find a quarterback. I look at the Raiders that said, you know, we've had Derek Carr for all these years and everything else, but he's not the guy. They go out and they get Jimmy G. And Jimmy G, after one year, that ain't worked out. I look at the Cleveland Browns that every year it seems like they are just about drafting quarterbacks from Johnny Manziel to Baker Mayfield. And they finally said, you know what? We're going to go get one of the best quarterbacks that are out there because he ended up having an incredible season on a 4-12 and team. And we're going to sign him a big fat contract. And boom. Two years in, I don't believe he's got 13 touchdown passes. I look at a team like Washington that, you know, went from a Jason Campbell to trading for Donovan McNabb, a guy who had been to the Super Bowl, to spending three number ones in a second for RG3, having Kirk Cousins, who, mind you, they might have been better off holding on to, franchise tag him twice, and then literally go into quarterback purgatory after that, signing Alex Smith, who has a spiral fracture that's about the gnarliest injury I've ever seen on the football field to drafting a Dwayne Haskins in the first round and going through the whole litany all the way to Ryan Fitzpatrick, a guy who stayed healthy all the time, couldn't make it through his first game. Still, after Sam Howe, they're howling for somebody else. Literally. And Minnesota, 
that thought they had Kirk Cousins. Now Kirk Cousins, a free agent, and their court, their, their wide receiver is kind of like, I'm going to see, are we getting my quarterback back before I sign a contract? Who's in popular demand? All these teams out here in desperation to the Jets that have drafted Sam Darnold, Zach Wilson with the number two pick, trade for Aaron Rodgers that don't have a quarterback. And yet, we are so good at finding quarterbacks because, of course, we wanted guys like Johnny Manziel and Paxton Lynch that we figure that the Dallas Cowboys, they can automatically find somebody else. Well, you know what? I give up. I give up. Just just get rid of Dak. Start all over. Okay? Just draft anybody because the Cowboys are luck into a superstar quarterback because that always happens. I give up. So to finish this off this morning before I go over here and put some more epoxy on these pieces, what's more likely from Rich Eisen that the Cowboys or the Eagles miss the playoffs? It's kind of interesting to me. NFC East headline maker to miss the playoffs next year. Cowboys, Eagles. show. Come on, son. One of them's missing it, guys. What, I, what I hate to be the bearer of bad What are we news? doing here, guy? If you're saying one of them's going to miss it, and I have to say which one's more likely to miss it. That's the question. I would go the Philadelphia Eagles. Ooh. Why wouldn't I go with the team that fell off a cliff as opposed to the team that always that, disappoints you the, no that that we stepped had, up i i would rather we had a bad half. one team stepped off a cliff the other one fell off the cliff so uh, i'll go with the team that fell off the cliff and we're all sitting here wondering did it have to do with you know big dom big dom big, not <laughs> that the, the, the head coach couldn't stop arguing with his own staff and players in a way that big dom would prevent nick sirianna from doing which is the most insane story. <laughs> story I've heard in the NFL yeah. in a long time. Big dumb. And so uh, they're, they're, the number of, of CSI <laughs> sleuthing that's going on as to why the Eagles season fell apart like it did right now from Big Dom Big to, to Jalen Hurts off. having too much on his plate because he's suddenly making so much money. Like the guy who's been, who's been nothing but a – professional a pro's pro is suddenly lost focus <laughs> i mean and jason kelsey is not going to be there maybe dude if Kel we're expecting to hear from jason kelsey at some point in time that he's going to mm -hmm. retire and if he if what we assume is likely going to happen to use the phrase that pays right now in this segment another thing that chaps my is ass is when steve monster hole to fill at one of the most important positions on the field for a team that runs the most unstoppable runs, play right. with him leading the way. Correct. And Rich, you, so I'll choose the Eagles over you, Cowboys. You were out sick last week, so you missed this. I, I, I'm aware of that. We came up with the idea that Jason Kelsey will be playing with his brother next. Oh, I said it on over <laughs> okay. I know you mentioned that, but Creed Humphrey is not a position. I mean, what, he'll play guard? Yeah. yeah. Why not? But they don't need a guard. Yeah. Well, their guard got their injured. Guard in the Super Bowl. Why would, he, why would he move his entire friend? Well, we had this conversation. He's with his brother. Okay, well, moving on. <laughs> uh, you, I like this topic, Rich. Uh, it's not your cup of tea. Quarterback under the most pressure next year. Derek Carr, Justin Herbert. Um, Derek Carr. In the news, Derek Carr restructured his contract. I got it. Uh, feels like he might be uh, right. Way so if he uh, doesn't perform there, do you think they're going to keep him around? Herbert. Because guess who's guess who's going to be uh, who, guess who's going to be the what? What's more likely? Hold on a second. What's more likely that Derek Carr is not the Saints' 2025 starting quarterback, okay. or Justin Herbert is not the Chargers' 2025 starting quarterback? What? Justin Herbert will be the 2025 starting quarterback. So what pressure is he under? And by the way, and by the way, as Greg, as I live up to being an MVP, like everyone thinks he is. As Greg Roman said, like, let's get him a running game. No, you didn't say let's get him a running game. He said, could you imagine what Justin Herbert would look like with a running game? To which I'm sure Austin Eckler was sitting at home on his Twitch going, what the hell? You know, hey, Greg. He didn't have? We don't know, but I can imagine what it might look like. Can you imagine Justin Herbert with a great running game? <laughs> so that's kind of the vision, and and I'm sure I'm sure Eckler's like, hey Greg, um, 
uh, um, you might you might have missed it two years ago when you were when you were when you were scheming for Patrick Ricard I'm right here and everyone else <laughs> literally right, but, right here. You know, I can hear you. I can. You know, things. I pretty much yeah. had a can you imagine Dak Prescott, Prescott with a great running, running game football. again the way he played this year? <laughs> That's true. Well, Rich, do you look at it so, like? But hey, he's new to the he's new to, he's new to the world there, and so yeah, I'm, who's got it better than Justin Herbert? But Chris, no one Nobody. looks at Derek Carr like he should be a Super Bowl winning quarterback MVP type. People hey. have those expectations of Herbert, right? But so people if- have the expectations of the Saints needing to actually start getting going, including the guy who's pushing the buttons of this program right now. What if I give you Herbert or Trevor Lawrence under more pressure next year? Um, Better question? No. Her- remove Herbert from the equation. What's the pressure he's under? You guys, everyone wants him to be this great so player, what? including us, and he hasn't so done Jim Harbaugh, jack squat. Jim Harbaugh is there. Give him some time. They're going to figure this thing right. out. You know they're going to start road grading. You know he's going to be better protected. Come yeah. on now. There's no pressure. Pressure is like, if I don't do this, where am I going to play? Pressure is what Baker Mayfield succeeded under because he's hmm. my boy. Okay. Okay. That's pressure. Like, if I don't perform here, I don't know where my next gig is going to be. I might be there holding the go. clipboard. I might have my hat on backwards. <laughs> That's pressure. That's pressure. All right, good people. Um, I wanted to play that extra part in there because they say, you know, Justin Herbert, you know, we think that he's a game-changing, you know, generational talented. And here it is. They're saying, can you imagine if he's got a great running game? Can you imagine if he has a great running game? Because you need that. As always, good people, I appreciate y'all. And uh, I'll see you on the road. Peace out. Our folks here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report.